Hey everyone, welcome back to the Sarah's Podcast. I'm not the host today, just the person who does the intro. In today's episode of The Past Masters, Mark Petru is joined by two friends of ours, Bonnie and James Ritchie from Simpsons Fish and Chips. I think I've known Bonnie and James for the same as Mark, really. I think we met them in 2010, give or take. It was at the Chippy Chat Barbecue in Coventry. We're all sitting down, enjoying the sun. I was on the barbecue. Mark was hosting, as always. He's good at that, bless him. And, you know, since that, though, since then, shall I say, we've all grown up and become parents. James and Bonnie have got two kids similar age to mine. Um, and a few years later, in 2016, they went on to win Fish and Chips for the Year at their Cheltenham shop. Um, and since then, they've expanded their business. They've now got a site in Stroud and they've got a mobile business. Um, so, yeah, you know, they're doing well. This is Bonnie's first time on the Sarah's podcast. But James been on previously on episode 48 with me. So, you know, James is a regular and uh, we need to get Bonnie on again at some point in the future. So be sure to go back and listen to episode 48 to get to know more about Simpsons. Today's episode is sponsored by Sarah's Curry Sauce, crafted with real herbs and spices sourced from around the world. No no fake flavours or essences, this is the real deal. This Sarah's Curry Sauce is designed for today's sophisticated customers, delivering the perfect harmony of sweetness and spice. Customers today have so much choice, so you might as well serve them something great. At Sarah's, we're absolutely committed to exceptional quality using only the finest ingredients. Our curry sauce is naturally gluten-free, free from artificial colours, artificial preservatives and any other nasty crap. Ensuring that the customers and you only get the true great curry sauce. A little goes a long way with our concentrated curry sauce. Just five kilos of our powder produces a whopping 41 kilos of sauce, equating to 410 100 gram servings. Order your Sarah's curry sauce today at www.sarahs.shop for next day free delivery across mainland UK or purchase the curry sauce from your favourite wholesaler. Go on, give it a try. To stay updated with everything we're doing at Sarah's, follow us on social media and join our mailing list for direct updates and competitions. We don't put competitions online because you know what happens. You get those stupid, annoying spammers that start asking people for credit card details. We won't do that. You've got to be in our inbox to get the offers. That's the best way to participate. If you think you're in the mailing list, check your junk box. If not, join it. The note will be in the show notes. Also, why not join the conversation at the Ceres Podcast Discussion Group on Facebook? If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends and colleagues in the industry. And don't forget to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. I know I keep saying it, but it really helps us move up in their ranking. Now, let's dive into today's episode with Mark, Bonnie and James. James and Bonnie, thanks very much for joining me this morning. We've um, we've had to move this date ar around and the times around. I think we're, we're probably uh, we've all had to um, move it at least once. I think we're one each, but we finally got there. Um, you uh, own Simpsons Fish and Chips. You are winner winners number twenty eight in the Fish and Chip Shop of the Year competition, yeah. and you won it with your yeah number twenty eight. You won it in 2016 with your Cheltenham store um, The Guardian described you um, as young fresh young fresh faces to the industry backed up with tremendous experience and skill um, I don't know if you knew that or not I've never heard that one uh, but um, Who wrote that press release? It, it wasn't 
Yeah, it wasn't plain sailing for you guys. Um, you came to the competition twice before, and um, and uh, and you when you won, you beat Kingfisher into second second place and Cod Scallops into third. So when you won, you beat two future two future mega stars in the trade. So you really must have been on top of your game. But I want to go right back to uh, to the very beginning, your journey into fish and chips, because you both came into fish and chips in different ways, but you both came into fish and chips as a couple. Um, talk me through it, all the way up to the decision to enter fish and chip shop of the year. And I don't mind uh, who goes first or if you both want to <laughs> jump in, um, but the stage is yours. I think Bonnie should go first. She's the, uh, the OG. The OG. I think, well, that's that's probably my <laughs> mum, isn't it? I think that's the thing. My parents have done it for, <laughs> oh, God, is it nearly 50 years now, perhaps? So they've been in the industry a long time. And they met when my mum was selling a chip shop and my dad was buying it. And so that was how they met. Um, and then... Can you tell me their names? Because obviously <laughs> they don't have they don't have the surname that that you had no yeah so they're Sim- so they're simpson so dad's brian simpson and so he's owned chip shops since he was about uh, i think he's about 30 something he came out of the raft and somebody said own some chip shops and so him and his mate put their money together and they owned chip shops in norwich um for a while together and then i can't remember why but my mum had a chip shop in uh, gloucestershire where she had it with her then partner they were selling the chip shop and my dad was buying it and that's how they met and so they my parents they're married that's how the name simpson established itself we they always had chip shops when i was growing up um and actually one of the chip shops that they bought when i was about i don't know nine or ten actually was about five minutes down the road from james's childhood home <laughs> and when me and james met he actually knew the the chip shop that that was that was there his, their family used it um so me and james then met at uh college when we were 17 or well, we actually went for about 16 but yeah we got together when we were 17 i mean you know, i'm just talking for james now sorry jim um and then no, we no were at college together and then we went to brighton uni we both did sculpture degrees at brighton uni in this time uh my parents had actually sold their businesses um to a bigger chain um and so they sort of retired um but my parents couldn't do it for very long they didn't retire for very long i think they managed about 18 months um uh so they bought a chip shop in chepstow with my uncle and they had that one that was the first simpsons we came out of uni and my parents were like what are you guys going to do you've got sculpture degrees you've essentially you know what what are you going to do now and they offered us uh, a shop in cheltenham and so i think i finished uni on something like the 25th of may i then had my degree show me and james then got married on the like 26th of june we went on honeymoon for a week we then came back and started training in the Chepstow chip shop. We then fitted the Cheltenham chip shop over the summer and we opened in the November of Chel- in Cheltenham in 2009. And so we literally, within six months of leaving uni, became business owners and were a young married couple running a business and navigating that while doing it, while uh, learning how to be managers bosses um and uh, adults, yeah, adults yeah and living uh, yeah. you know although we had both worked in the chip shops when we were growing up we never ran them we weren't the managers on the shift and so we went out of you yeah, yeah we didn't even we weren't even frying well i was but really? you weren't actually which is weird now to think about it that mm. i was the fryer and you weren't um yeah. <laughs> Do you, what medium did you like working in when you were artists? B- 
because automatically I, 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 I've got visions of you two on the potter's wheel like in Ghost. And <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite. Um, what, what, what did you, I mean, was the plan for you to do Fish and Chips and um, scratch your artistic itch at the same time and, and try and make it as artists as well? Or did you just bin those degrees? Um, do either of you n- now still today express yourselves um artistically in that way or or are you just fully immersed in parenting and and fish and chipping i have to ask yeah, i think yeah no you're right and i think sadly that part of us has been put to one side which is a shame and i think that there are um benefits to those degrees that we had and it has helped us so oh, i can see it massively thing. exactly and i think that we both have a creative eye and i think even just the branding of the shop and the way we wanted it to to look and be run and the vibe that we wanted to give off, we put all of our energy into that. I see and it. I'll talk about that in a bit. Yeah. yeah, but we just thought if we're going to do this, and we never thought this no. was a permanent thing. We were like, right, we'll open a shop. We'll make it successful. We'll sell it. We'll have loads of money. It'll be great. We can be artists. No no problem. Yeah. We can do this. And then we just kind of just kept going with it. And then we're still just keeping going with it. There's no sort of... Like hamsters in a that. wheel. Oh, exactly. God, that's how we make it. We'll make it the coolest chip shop that's ever going to have existed. And then we'll sell it on, <laughs> you know. I think that's right. I think that we used... The, the stuff that you learn at uni doing a sculpture degree it isn't just about how you're physically putting work together. It's about building shows. It's about using PR. It's about using everything else. There's a lot of side courses that you do that end up being about how you're essentially going to sell yourself within an, exactly within an art industry. And so mm. because of that, we both had an understanding, made, uh, especially at the time, which was a different way of looking at it, certainly to the way that my parents looked at it. But when we first opened that shop in Cheltenham, there were no chip shops that looked like ours. We went in with a strong design with, you know, the name that we worked on, James Camp, the logo. I wanted different you know, colours. We had traditionally, our chip shops had always been like green. And so it had just been that we had changed everything. And so there was there was elements that we took as a couple that we wanted a vision for Simpsons to look like. And I think that still happens. You know, we've rebranded ourselves over the years. And it is a conversation between me and Jim going, we like this. This is what we think looks good. This is what's looking good within other food industries. And we never pitched ourselves against chip shops. We never looked at what other chip shops were doing because it kind of didn't matter. And I know that that sounds really arrogant, but when you're trying to get somebody to put their hands in their pocket, you're going up against other brands. And this isn't a local chippy. We wanted to be something that was something else that was creating a brand. Yeah, yeah we wanted to compete with you know other food chains and you know, your food types as well your branding is there's only one word epic it is epic i, I absolutely loved your branding it, it it um it moved the whole industry forward um just some of the tattoo art that you used in your logos some of the wall art um the colors it had a it had um a fresh almost nautical sort of theme to it 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 the the brighton element was was in it you could see it was in there and you could see that it it had been done um so much thought had gone into it i i really thought it was fantastic and um uh and um i don't think anyone was doing what what you were doing with with the uh, with the art but carry on with the story tell me about um your uh, the drivers, the decision making of, of how you came to um, to uh, you know came across the fish and chip shop of the year competition and what motivated you to to enter it and um, and your strategy. What 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 did you what did you put in place um, you know, to to um, to try and win it? Mm. I, I, I yeah, I was about to say I think um, it was a, a yeah. chippy um, chat event. Chippy I, think, I think it was, yeah, yeah. Um, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it was cool. Yeah. We were just like, oh, there's a whole other side yeah. to this industry. We didn't know anybody else in, in the industry. And we just thought, oh, we'll go along to this barbecue, see what happens. We met Stelios, um, we met you, and we were just like, this is cool. We want yeah. to be part of this. Um, and from then on, it was just discovering 
how the structure of the competition worked. And obviously a lot of it was point scoring. So we just went through the fine details of everything to make sure there was nowhere that we could lose silly points. We were just like, you've got to have different tongs for sausages and fish, even though they come out of the same oil. Fine, we'll do that. Do you know what I mean? It's 10 yeah. points. So we just went down to really the fine details to make sure that we couldn't miss anything. Um, but, yeah. I yeah. thought that that was my my strategy as well. Actually, it was um, mm. wasn't um, about how you can um, gain points. It was how you could not lose them, and, mm. and and just trying to plug plug holes. But it didn't it didn't happen for you overnight, did it? The competition. I don't think we had. It did, it did but it, it didn't. But it also did. It just like absolutely blew yeah. us out of the water. I think like we entering the first time and coming second was yeah. unbelievable for us, and we didn't expect that at all. Um, we just thought it takes everyone a few years. We'll see where it takes us, and hopefully one day we can win. So it, it almost was. And, and I, um, sorry, Jim, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, no, it, no J- James is completely right. It it did happen quickly because we didn't know what we were doing. We didn't have a strategy. Yeah, we looked. Through, James went through all those points that bit by bit where you can't lose points. But it wasn't like we sat down and were like we're going to win this it was more like well what have we got to lose let's give it a go let's see how we can better ourselves Mm -hmm. it wasn't as that's it we're going to wipe the floor with anybody we're you know we we're not that arrogant we're not that big-headed that that's where we were James is right Mm -hmm. he would have absolutely gone through bit by bit going you know mirrors on the end of bloody sticks trying to find under fridges and you know all of (laughs) that stuff you know all of that stuff but it was never that we were you know that we were that going to blow people out of the water and that day we we were shocked weren't we when we when we came second we had no idea mm-hmm. so was the motivation for you to just try and be the best version of yourselves that you could be to make sure your business was running as as well as it could run and the competition yeah. was really like a like a health check for you and um uh, or, or was there some sort of clear motivation to like up the turnover or to get the accolade oh, yeah. and um yeah i think it was all of that really we wanted some recognition for what we were doing that we were trying to do things differently but make no mistake i knew at some point we would win i was absolutely focused and determined on that i just didn't think it'd be as quickly as i we didn't did. Um, and I think actually, if, <laughs> did you not? Know, I had every confidence. I knew, I knew we would do it. Um, but I think the first year, actually, if we had one, we wouldn't have had the infrastructure in place to deal with it because no. we didn't. You know, we had to get our restaurant refitted. Um, there was a lot that we did before we won that meant that we were able to take on that extra turnover yeah. and you know just able to deal with it and staffing and everything. So actually, it was a blessing in disguise to skip out that second year. Yeah. Um, because we were knocked out in an earlier round and as absolutely gutting as it was because the thing is once we come second we were like well there's only one better from here you know yeah. it's like we've got to win it now otherwise it, and it felt kind of embarrassing in a way third? Year where we were we got knocked out and we were like we oh my god how did we come we, third I'm... no we didn't come third we got knocked out uh, we didn't we weren't in the final and then this and then the next um, time we, went... we were in the final again the next time we won yeah, yeah. and that was you that I was doing because me and your mum did the the first one because we just had Betty. Yeah, yes, we had. Yes, we had. There's p- the, the pictures from the competition um, of when she was born in the October, and crazy. we were we, yeah, yeah we were in the we were in the hotel with her in the in the January at the awards, yeah. and everybody was like, Christ, they brought the baby. Like I was upstairs, like running up and down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was running yeah. up and down stairs, like between the awards like feeding like breastfeeding the baby like <laughs> get back to sleep and like <laughs> yeah um yeah so um so it really was yeah. a team effort you 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 yeah, you got to the final and came second the the year that you didn't make it was that a, do you think that was geographical were you just up against somebody were you up against the, who who ultimately oh, won that year it was it was the it was. no 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 it's um no, it uh, C begins with a C. Uh, girl from the islands. Oh no, I know who won. I mean, in our area, Frankie's. Frankie's won. Was. Was it Frankie's Frankie's that we won? were there. Yeah, but I mean, in, in our area, we were there. We were there. You, 
You went. I think Merck didn't no. knock us out. In sorry, the, in I'm sorry to round. sound like I'm being a, an idiot here. We did come second or third that time because we took, we took we both. We took both to the second awards. We took. We went to it, but we weren't in the final. Oh, I promise no. you, we weren't in it. Okay. <laughs> well, in any yeah. case, third attempt. Yeah. Not, yeah. O- not only did you win, but you you beat Kingfisher into second place, who who went on to win it, and you also beat Cod Scollops into third. And I do think the robustness of the judging, if you're not ready, if yeah. you're not if you're not the right people to take to take the title, it it does sort you out. It does, um, yeah. you know. And and those those two extra years, obviously, you you'd had time to rebuild and regroup and. Um, Bonnie, you you got them. You, you got the the business over the line at, at the third attempt, but it was probably still yeah. very much a team. It effort. absolutely was. I'm um, not taking any like James is being very flattering to me there. I'm not taking <laughs> anything like we it. We, well, we did, did it, it together. together. We, we, we did, did it together. It had no. Together. We were there together. We were there as the as the team. We were there as the brand, and we were together as a couple doing it. And that was the thing. It was it was incredibly important to us. It was in. It was, I mean, looking back on it now, it became all-consuming. I can remember the day that we had, I think Tracy Poskett did our inspection, and we hadn't had a holiday. I mean, you don't have a holiday anyway, do you, when you when you're, um, when you're own a chip shop and you're young like that? You don't go away, especially with young children. We just didn't go away. And I think we were on edge every day through that judging process. Like, you, is it going to be today? You know, have they turned up yet? Do we recognise that person? Who's mystery shopped from the night before? And then I can remember we actually had a press event while Tracy Poskett came. We actually had one of the local... And I I think I was making fish cakes with them or doing something or showing them how to make fish and chips. I literally had like 15 journalists in the shop. They were having a fry off. We got all the journalists in, and they were yeah. cooking fish and chips themselves. And we had that's to judge right, that that's right. <laughs> and Tracy turned, Tracy turned up. Tracy turned up. Honestly, we just did this weird shit all the time. <laughs> the, now, yeah, she tr- turned up. Tracy's now retired from the trade, and I've asked oh. her to come on, and she's sadly declined. And and I, I totally oh. get it. She's she's now into pastures new. Um, her her partner in the business, Matthew Silk, has uh, agreed to come on and, and tell us about their experience but tracy's got a lot to answer for she judged me yeah. many times <laughs> she's a lovely lovely person um yeah, uh, but she's unforgiving as well as a yeah. judge mm-hmm. she's just perfect she's so knowledgeable um giovanni fionda was on a few weeks ago and he he said that tracy poskett owes him 50p <laughs> and the, the fact that he's he still hasn't forgotten after all these years you know i find I find that very Scottish. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, But, but um, no, Tracy's great, isn't she? Um, The 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 judging process is it's brutal. It's grueling when you're when you're waiting and you're waiting and they leave it up until two three days before the judging time's going to run out and you know it's coming. You absolutely know it's coming. And if a chip falls on the floor, it's like it's like, like get yeah. that chip you know, yeah. you know. um i mean i remember seeing tracy's face and thinking oh thank god it's not michael pilly because <laughs> 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 we'd she... had him every other bloody time and i thought <laughs> yeah, i yeah. can't deal with this uh, guy uh, <laughs> my... i love him oh, it, that was too much. <laughs> he's he's a machine oh, <laughs> the hat, the... i learned everything I know. I know from michael pilly, and that's yeah. the thing like if you if then if james ever goes back to judging again if he walks through your door like I can remember you coming back from other oh, people yeah. telling me That's stories and I was going, oh God, did you do what Michael Pilly did? Oh yeah, I did. I got the stick out with the mirror under all the fridge. That. Yeah, all of that. I did all of that. I learned it all from him. <laughs> Take oh, the lid off the rumble. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, we're, we're, I've, I've done a bit of judging. I don't do it anymore, but um, I, I remember going to one shop. I won't name it, but it was the sort of shop where you wipe your feet on the way out. And, um, <laughs> and, um, and uh yeah i mean i've got some i've got some photos on an old iphone when when i'm next in your company i'll show you but um right. yeah you, you you'd have to take the the rough with the smooth the problem is when you find a good shop um you still have to find yeah. something otherwise yeah. you're not doing your job right and mike pilly doesn't matter you know i mean you can have you can have a clean team in you can do 
Michael finds something. He'll find yeah. he's that good. Which is fine. And the thing is, you just know he's doing that yeah. everywhere he goes. Yeah, so it, it doesn't does. matter. It's not, he doesn't single anyone out. Like, he's got a reputation for it. So yeah. you know that that's just how he is. And yeah. he's going to find something at every shop he goes to, which is, is a good thing. But I think... Yeah. So... So please I was going to say, but I think if you're preparing yourself for a pilly inspection, you're kind of halfway there. Yeah, like if you if you've gone through mm. that and you've got through that judging stage and you've managed to get through with like having Michael Pilly do it, you know that the standard that you need to be at. And I think what in, you know, normal chip shops that are just chip shops that you go into that don't go into the awards. And that I certainly don't have the N triple F. And when we had like, you know, the old Sea Fish Award and then the Q Award and things like that, when you had to go in for those and you had to do those things, it really got you ready. And I think that my parents didn't have yeah. the chip shops that were winners like that. But what my parents did do was they were the quality Sea Fish holders. And actually, they were the first chip shop that ever won the award. Yeah. For, for the Q Award ever when it was first started. Yeah. And because they did that, I was used to knowing what that was like. I knew what good fish and chips were like. And although me and James absolutely did things differently to my parents, one of the things that I always heard growing up was, oh, we really love your fish and chips. It's not like other people's. So what we had already gained from the knowledge from my parents, we then managed to have an uplift on. I would hope that James would agree. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, and it's good to yeah yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, it's it's good to honour them as well because um, obviously getting that getting that sort of um, grounding um, it's it's the foundation for what you build your own business off as well. I mean, my um, the the only thing I didn't carry over from my father was his um, his approach to VAT. <laughs> Um, I, I, you know, my, my father's you know departed from this planet and and long gone but his his um attitude towards to towards uh how he ran his accounts is completely different to mine but you know, that's, that's a conversation for when i press that yeah, stop like recording button you know. <laughs> yeah. um so um everybody has uh a, a lucky usp that um the year that you, you 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 came second, the winner was the bay, and I think um, the thing the the part of the reason why Callum was chosen was for his uh, his sustainable practices, and you know he 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 hung he hung his uh, his presentation on those qualities and 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 on those principles, and I think uh, you know that, that 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 made him stand out, and he, even. Um, and uh, and I applaud Callum for that. Um, when you won, your branding was was exceptional. Um, the the way that your and by branding, I don't just mean your logos and your artwork. I mean your uniforms, the way that you presented fish and chips to the audience, customers, non customers, was outstanding. But you also wrote a children's book as well didn't you and you and you really pushed the gluten free side of what you were doing as well and um and i think um what you did was you gave fish and chips a, a rebirth um in that you made it really cool again you took fish and chips um from from being a gray pound kind of meal for the for the aging generation and made it really cool for people to start start liking fish and chips and i think I think I, I need to acknowledge that, and um, um, because that we have listeners that, that that take on these podcasts to try and gain, um, you know, an insight into what it takes to win. I, I think we we can all agree that um, to win the competition, you have to run your business at a level that isn't really sustainable day to day. Uh, in you know, I mean, there are some shops that can maintain it. I, I certainly can't. I, I, I have like a competition level that I run at and then I have a, a an everyday level that is still good enough for five stars and still good enough for a, a quality award. But I, I hope that you'd agree with me that, you know, um, being in a competition kind of situation is a bit more like DEFCON 5. You know, it's all hands on deck. And um, uh, But um, just uh, I just wanted to really acknowledge 
what 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 I think you did that made you stand out the year you won. Is there anything that that you think set you apart as as champions as well that the listener could benefit from? I'd say it was the same as that you're saying. That's that's what we felt. We thought, you know, like you said, the fish and chips has um, a reputation for being for older people, and we thought, well not to be crude, but that's a finite source. You know, we need to make sure that this, this is something that generations are going to want to keep coming to. We want we want the older lot and we want their kids and we want their kids as well. And we need it to be a sustainable business. So we thought we need to make this accessible. Future proof it. Exactly. Um, so that was always our plan because we thought, well, we've got kids and we need to feed them. And uh, if our business fails, then they don't get fed, you know, or <laughs> we're off doing something else. But... Um, yeah, I mean, even now we're constantly pushing the brand in just as much as anything else. The only downside to that, I would say, is a lot of people think that we are some kind of franchise. Because um, you look so old. corporate, you're yeah, so polished. They just think, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a franchise. And I remember someone saying to me, I was in the shop the other day, Fry, and someone came in and said, "Oh, Cheltenham's prices are a bit more than yours. You watch out; they'll be putting yours up next." And I was like, "Well, it's just me. <laughs> like, what are you on about? <laughs> you know?" <laughs> and you have to explain this whole like scenario every time you, uh, every time you're talking to people. But and you need to put your prices up as well, Jim. That's supposed to be in line with. <laughs> <laughs> you're selling that too cheap we've had this conversation love you need to get that like different it was something about a kid's meal i thought well i haven't checked it right <laughs> oh <laughs> i'm really joking busted i was just like well it's cheltenham they got more money there <laughs> just, there, i mean there is different there is differences you know um, from you know geographically on mm. you know some areas are more affluent and um, and and um, well, I remember when I had six shops, I had five that were on beef dripping and one that was on that was on palm oil, simply because um, the one that was on palm oil was in Cambridge city centre, and beef dripping was never going to work there. It's, it's such a diverse, you know, melting pot of of cultures and ethnicities and and um, and, and customers. I could never. I I was just exclude too many yeah. people. So, so, so I went on to solid palm, um, and it worked. So, you know, when it comes, when it comes to branding, I think your branding is, is on point, but you have to, you have to accept that the menus aren't always going to be the same. So, yeah. um, let's talk about the big day that you won. What, what, what <laughs> how, tell, tell me how you felt, what happened, uh, it's a, it, it is a circus, isn't it? You just you get pulled in loads of different directions. How did you feel um, when they called out your name? I think, yeah, yeah, I think the whole time that we spent in the run up to it, and that's what I was saying about Tracy Foskett before. Like when we had our inspection, that was the point where we could do no more apart from the presentation. So I think that was in about the September, October, possibly. And she literally looked at us as this like young couple with two young children that were probably pretty broken and sleep deprived. And Tracy was like, go away, book a holiday, book a weekend. You need to leave this. Your staff have got this, go. And I think that, that was one of the first mm. times that we had regrouped, especially with small children as a couple and spent like two or three days where we weren't completely consumed for the past three years by by the competition, yeah. by the business, and by what we were doing, and Jim leaving at God knows what hour before the children, or letting me sleep for an hour before he went into cutfish. All of those sorts of things were, you know, it. I used to put put them. They were. I used to put Betty on the uh, side while I was cutting fish, didn't I? In the um, in the uh, car seat. Yeah, I should just be sat there. So yeah, i um, I think uh, the 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 biggest. Um, emotion for me when we won was really <laughs> i just i just not not euphoria them. just like it was you it was that was all of there but i just thought thank fuck for that I just <laughs> ever again do you know what i mean because i was like this is three years now yeah. it's like brother bonnie said it's completely consumed our lives it had, our family it had, life, it had, it had, our home it life had. do you think it um, takes that to win I, it do you think it has to consume i don't it? know I, I i've not been close uh, enough to other families who have done it like that but i think because we mm. You know, we did live five doors down from my parents. We do live within walking distance of the shop. We were completely consumed by it. At the point where we won, we had 
we had had new ranges, we had had shop fits, we had rebranded, we had had 30 members of staff, you know, I still had, I, I think, I think I kind of, yeah, I think Bo was under two when we won, like we were, we were a young family. So you were numb anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Physically, emotionally, like, yeah. yeah. And so um, I can <laughs> yeah. remember on the run up to doing it in the presentation and James was like, you're the one that has to do it this year with me. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not front and centre. I'm not doing, I'm not doing, I'm like, you know, you do it with mummy. So it's not my thing. And Jim was just like, no, you're doing it with me. We're doing it together. And yeah, I knew it'd make a difference. And yeah. I was so nervous. So and even when we got to London and we were trying to do, you know, like we spent so long trying to run through of how, what we're going to say, how we're going to say it, what we're going to give the judges, what we're going to do, how are we going to do this? And then when we got into the room, I think all thoughts left my head. And the problem is, is that I, I constantly talk over everybody anyway. I've, you know, binds of ADHD just coming off of me. So as soon as somebody wants me to talk about something that I'm passionate about, I will talk over anybody. And, you know, and it probably comes across as being quite rude. But um, I think certainly James would have been able to be like, right, take a deep breath or I can, I can remember walking in and we're saying stand by side and I think James grabbed my hand and squeezed it and was just like it's all right it's okay you're with me it's all right like calm down we know each other bits like even if we didn't get the script word for word right we knew what the sentences were going to be off the other person so I knew where he was about to stop talking about sustainability where I came in with children or something like that so we kind of knew how it went um and we left, yeah, we left that judging competition then. And I think we went and got some food. And we just literally sat and were like, oh, my God, what has happened? <laughs> it's only how 10 minutes, but it's it? exhausting, no isn't idea. it? Yeah, we had no idea how we did. No really? idea. Because we've never seen anyone else do it, you know. Yeah. Um, and we just thought, oh, God, let's say we've done enough, you know. Well, it, well, it, it quite was quite emotional enough. to think yeah, about. Yeah, it, 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 it is. It is a huge amount of emotion. It's a huge amount of, on, on all sorts of mix of feelings as well. Mm. but you smashed it you absolutely oh, smashed so it you say. <laughs> well <laughs> so the judges say so um yeah. they call your name out who's on the table with you when they call when they call the name out well it was all staff our whole table was staff because we thought we're, we're, we're gonna do this we're gonna, we're gonna, gonna you know, party yeah. win or we lose we have to have the confidence yeah we yeah. just thought we've got to have the confidence and we thought we're a united front and if we do win it we will it will regret not taking everyone you know yeah. Um, because we knew we had a good chance because we'd come second before, so we thought, you know, we've got yeah. a good chance at it, good crap. Um, so yeah, the whole table was staff, and we all just I think I had my head in my hand. Someone sent me a video later where I was just had my head, just my head in my hand, and yeah. uh, everyone else was stood up and jumping around. And, well, yeah, I, did, I didn't get to see your presentation when you were together, but I got to see the one two years before. And, um, and and you lit up the room. Um, I thought I thought your presentation was was, was amazing. So if there's two of you in there, it, it must have been. Uh, ha- I don't know how you didn't play the I, roof. Off I the can't room. remember who but, did it. Um, I can't remember who judged us now. I can't remember who was in the room. No, I can't. Um, I don't know. I don't know who was there. We'd have to ask them. But I can't remember. But yeah, it was incredible. When we did win, like when when Nigel Bar- Barden like read our names out and I think that we just it, it was pure elation as well like the thing is when you're not in the business it sounds utterly ridiculous it sounds stupid that you've put everything into this that you want this so badly like that because when you're in it fish and chip shop of the year is the biggest thing going but when you withdraw mm. yourself from it and you're not doing it anymore it just seems like for other people when you say it, it's like what what are you on about like what's that like that's a thing <laughs> like no. that's a thing that's a thing yeah. like you know you, you all you, you know what you live yeah. you, you live for the weeks of press afterwards that's what you know that that's what yeah. drove sales yeah oh my the, god did we know well absolutely did like if yeah. yeah what did it we what did it do one chance what did it do for your business uh, no don't, don't tell me that yet tell me tell me what happened um from an industry perspective, everybody must have been very complimentary. Must have come up. Did you get whisked off for interviews? Were you yeah, on? Do, do you do lots of TV? What, what 
tell me about the circus that happened. So we were really lucky. When, yeah. yeah. So the same day we went. Yeah, you so we were really lucky. We had like okay. it, the, there was a there was a moment where we thought we had possibly done it, where Seafish's PR team. Ashley had come up to us and were like I need your certificates your um, food hygiene certificates and we were like we're literally about to go into this dinner to have this what the hell are you on about like you know that we've got food hygiene certificates no 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 but if you win if you win if you win we're, we're going to ask everybody we're going to ask all the top people if you've got the food hygiene certificates and so we're literally emailing the shop going can you just find can you go in the, can you take go stand there can you take a picture like can you send it to us because we need this and Jim looked at me and went, do you think we've done it? And I went, no, they've asked everybody. Jim's going, no, 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 I don't think they have. And it's because the next day you're on this morning because they want your food hygiene certificate. Yeah. Um, but mm. we, so yeah, we literally won. You get whisked off. Everybody comes. You know, there's some people that don't want to say well done. There's some people that literally want to, you know, see you dead and buried because you beat them. Um, and then... <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's not that let's not I wasn't, name I wasn't naming them I just said that they existed <laughs> you know they they exist so that's fine there's, there's got to be a good amount of hatred otherwise why well, you know there's got to be something <laughs> exactly <laughs> so so I mean, we yeah I mean that night we went and did loads of interviews and had photographs there's some hilarious photographs of me and James in like jackets that are enormous on the both of us the, the sea fish jackets <laughs> drown the both of us and they're like bonnie can you open your mouth james can you feed her chips and we're just like how this hasn't been edited i do not know like there's a picture of me like yeah mouth wide open um and then i actually had, i lost my voice we've done so much talking i lost my voice and our pr team that was with us put me in complete voice rest didn't they and so we weren't allowed to go out that night. Yeah. So, so oh, we couldn't have anyway. We were exhausted, weren't we? I don't think we could have. We just we took the trophy to bed. I remember <laughs> being in bed with us, and there's pictures of us with this trophy like cuddled under the and the, uh, the and you've still got these the two young kids as well at the yeah. same time. Yeah. Wow. So you did this morning. Mm. And we were really lucky with this morning because it happened to be the uh, the most watched rewatched YouTube uh, video of of this morning it still is because it was the um the night after the ntas yeah. so phil and holly had come in and they're both hung oh, over and they were shit-faced weren't they? they were absolutely shit-faced yeah and um and holly came in and i just remember looking at her and being like whoa <laughs> and, uh, and she just looked at the makeup lady and she just went help <laughs> help. <laughs> help me that's um, brilliant and we thought oh, this is great and this year they were like sleeping yeah. on the sofa and stuff so it was actually just like it was just yeah. fun and it kind of made it a bit there was another dimension to it where they thought that we were pissed because bonnie had no voice and <laughs> we, they were already been partying, partying the night before so um it, yeah it was it was a fun time but yeah it, it ended up being rewatched loads of times which helped us yeah. and and um, what helped us as well because the, sorry, the, jo the joke kept on running because i had completely lost my voice so they were asking us questions and i'm like ah! like can't get a word out and <laughs> they wanted us to you know they're, they're literally going oh the best thing i want now to soak up all this alcohol with that hungover with that drunk that we want fish and chips and it was the best thing because we were there doing it we were there giving it to them it's what they were talking about so it wasn't you know they mm. kept coming back to us they kept talking about it we were really really lucky that that was that day and it was just yeah, you know, serendipitous that it happened that it, that's what you know we were so lucky yeah, brilliant. So, um, obviously, it must have done something to your turnover as well. Um, uh, doubled, easily doubled overnight. Unbelievable. Phenomenal. Yeah. When you got back to the shop, how how was that? Incredible. It was it's lovely, you know. And we just were so grateful to everyone because they had put in almost as much work as us, you know. Um, Mia, she was there. Uh, she's in Australia now, but I mean we were just so happy and so grateful that they had helped us do this. Yes. Um, I think we all shared a bottle of champagne or something, didn't we, at the end of the first Friday after. I think, I th I think well, we'd actually I'm got be a little... pizza or something. I think if I've got a feeling yes, that you, I, I think I've got a feeling you need a massive Domino's order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. I'm going to be a bit anarchy. Can you remember, I mean, some of this will be easy. What frying range did you win on? Was it Huigo? Yeah, Huigo, yeah. Huigo, yeah. Huigo. You won on a Huigo. Um, yeah. And because some people want to know, um, what size fish were you using? Are you mainly cod? Are you mainly haddock? 
mainly cod. Uh, we were using 32 plus and cutting at that point. Lovely. Um, Beautiful fish. Yeah, lovely. Uh, mm. I don't do that now. I just buy the loins now. We no, cut. The Cheltenham cuts there. every now and again. Um, but, I mean, Christ, talking about cutting yeah. fish, James used to go in and cut fish at 6 a.m. <laughs> And it'd probably, it, it, oh my God, hours. the amount, I, yeah, I can remember coming in once and it was you and Grant and I think you had started about 6am and I think you were finishing about, just before we were opening, about 12 and that was prepping for the Friday because the mm. amount of fish that we went through, the amount of fish that we were going through, we had three fish fridges stacked and it, it wow. you, all James did was stand and cut fish. For an inland shop, it was yeah. a big one there. It was. And I think I think as well, like you just mentioned about the range, I think that we were out to prove that as well because everyone was saying, you've got to have a Florigo range, you've got to be using Middleton's batter, you've got to be using this product, that product, this oil, this dripping, It was whatever. always, yeah. And we were like, well, no, we don't do yeah. any of those things. We, we're, we're using a Huigo range. We were on Sarah's batter. Like, we were just, we weren't doing any of the things that apparently you have to be doing. To win, uh, to win the Which competition, is, and uh, we were really happy for our suppliers, yeah, suppliers and stuff as well that we could be like, yeah, we're repping. Yeah, we were like you're talking at a time before Sarah's was Sarah's. You're talking at a time when it was the natural batter company. You're also talking at a time when when it wasn't even stocked in F- Friars Pride or TQ. We couldn't get it. We had to buy it from like Casero stocked it. I know they've been bought out now, but you know we were having to buy it by the pallet load from Stelios. Our true belief in these products were there from a dodgy Greek fellow. Exactly, out the back of the exactly. exactly. By exactly. pallets of batter, yeah. <laughs> but but that's where our true belief in our brand and our product was there. You know, we always said that nothing we and it still stands now. Nothing we sell, I would feed my if if I wouldn't feed it to my children, I won't sell it. And because of that. Everything is as clean as it can be. There's no added salt, no added MSG. There's nothing. So that everything is as pure and as clean as it can be. And um, I think when we met Stelios at that Chippy Chat barbecue, that was the first time that we had heard somebody talking yeah. about a product that we were like, ah, this is great. This isn't full of this. This is a this is a place where we Again, we can yeah. see it. And this sounds like a bit of you. Yeah. And James is totally yeah. right. All the winners had yeah. KFE ranges. They were all on Middleton's golden sheep batter. They were all full of all of that stuff. Frymax, and you know, even now you still see it because they're the ones with the massive budgets that are like, yeah, you have so and so's won it on our range. So and so's using this product, but we didn't. We used ground nut. We cut fish. We used a, a, a batter that nobody else did, and we had a range that nobody else did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well. Um... I always use one word to describe really good fish and chips, and that's trustworthy. And it, and um, if you if you're doing the job right, you don't you don't need to hide any nasties in in what you're doing. And you know, clearly, you're passionate uh, about n- not only um, your branding and and uh, and your service, but the food that you're turning out as well. And um, and you know, making the right choices for Simpsons clearly is part of what makes you a success story um so let's talk about the aftermath obviously what goes up must come down there must be uh there must be uh uh you know a continuation of the success now you went from from cheltenham um was your next shop stroud was that your second shop yeah that's right yeah and then you got a third Um, as well didn't you We've had um, we've had two more since then. Actually. Two more yeah. since then. Um, so we opened Stride in 2017. Yeah. And that was just because we wanted a second shop. It wasn't, you know, we were just like, let's do it. We, we saw this building, we thought it looked lovely and that we could make a go of it there. We knew it would never be Cheltenham. It's, yeah. it's a little takeaway. There's not space for um, a restaurant or anything like that. But we thought we think we could make a go of this. It's, a, it's an area that's very Green Party, eco-friendly. And we thought, no one, no other chip shop is going to be doing what we do. Here. Does Lily Allen live near there? He used to. He yeah, used she does, to. Yeah, her dad came there a couple of times. I've not seen him for a while, but um, Keith Allen's been there a couple of times. Right. Um, yeah. So that was that, and and I love Stride. Um, and then after we separated, I moved to Stride, and and Stride's like my baby now. So uh, I look after this. Um, and yeah, we opened another one here back in Bradley Stoke, which is where Bonnie's parents had one years ago so a similar area 
forgotten about Bradley Stoke. Yeah. Yeah, dominoes. Yeah. It, um, they basically just got beat out, uh, bought out by a BP pension fund, I think, and then they right. piped the rent up, and then they opened Harvest, their opposite us, and they were doing fish and chips for three ninety five, yeah. and we were just like, oh, we can't, just can't this, compete so. with that. We couldn't, we couldn't compete with it, we couldn't compete with it. Which was sad, it was sad, yeah. But, uh, and then more recently we opened one in Quedgley, which is uh, just on the outskirts of Gloucester. And we thought, well this is it, this is the triangle. You know, we've got Cheltenham here, Stroud here, Gloucester's here. We'll we'll sew up the Cotswolds essentially, (laughs) you know, the Gloucester share anyway. Um, And it was just sort of towards the end of Covid. And our shops did quite well in COVID, I have to say. We had, you know, we simplified things. Everything was click and collect. We knew exactly what we were going to be selling that day because the time slots had been all sewn up a couple yeah. of days in advance. So it was actually really, um, and, and we were one of the only places that were allowed mm. to open. So, you know, everybody that was going would usually have gone out. We're coming for a takeaway. So actually COVID was not, it didn't hit us anywhere near as bad as some some people that did get hit. Considering, exactly, considering how bad it could have we, been. We were lucky. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we uh, got the bounce back loans, as everyone does, and we thought, well, we don't actually need that. Maybe we could use that money to open another shop. Yeah. <laughs> Which is what we did. And you're probably not supposed to do that. Yeah, I, I think that, yeah. I think you probably need off. to stop talking. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, you're going to have to cut that mark. <laughs> um, no, but, look, you won't be the first. No, we're just, I'm just being honest, you know, yeah. I'm just saying what happens. And, uh, and that uh we finally opened it it took over a year to complete yeah, on that shop a long time we were just like we need yeah. to pull out of this there's something yeah. not right um and then by the time we've done it we got it and there was an energy crisis and then they start putting our energy up to five thousand pounds a month and we just thought but but well, on, but how on earth are we gonna hang on because they've also missed yeah. up the war in ukraine hit the war in ukraine hit and the price hike of that oh, it all, hit it, it at everything. the same time yeah. at the same point it's a perfect storm. It was a perfect storm. Awful. Yeah, and with it's going to be a long time before. It's going to be all, yeah, and and the thing is, previously coming out of the back of COVID, just as we were coming out of that, I had been approached by somebody that me and James had worked with previously, and he was a he was, he's not really a business coach, but he can take brands to other levels, and he has a group of angels behind him as investors. And I was stood in front of these investors and they chose to back us. And the deal was that they would back us, but they, I wouldn't allow them to touch what we already had because it secured me and James and our children. So the, the, they wanted pieces yeah. of our existing businesses and I wouldn't sign the deal with them for it because I didn't want to have us lose that as you know as as the collective family that we couldn't lose that for our children um i think in actually in hindsight we had a lucky escape because they they actually wanted to to have the simpsons brand in they they wanted they in the end they wanted me to open a, a chip shop every six months within like a 50 mile radius wow um so the the deal was there to be done that me and James would run them all between us and that we would have 10 shops within, I mean, this is like two years ago now, but it would essentially mean by the time that me and James were 40, we would have had 10 shops in that region running them wow. with that investment behind us. And it would be excluding the, the two that we originally had. Um, so that we had that to secure us. Um, it didn't work, and I think I'm really bloody grateful it is now. But but yeah. I think yeah, that's... I think as well as personally it didn't work, I think one of the things that was really hard for Quedgley was we struggled staffing it. We struggled having it in a slightly lower demographic area where we couldn't get people to part with their money. We struggled constantly with staffing we had problems between me and James trying to run the other shops and get over there. And we also had um, our youngest autism and ADHD diagnosis within that Christmas. So we had that November, that November, December hit us with a new shop, 
a, a, a child being diagnosed, trying to deal with that as a family, also then being thrown into an energy crisis. It was just a, a horrible time for us. And then... Mm, there was really no positive not at all, at not all, at all. there was a real yeah. learning curve for us about what we actually want to do and you always think oh more shops more money or more shops more this whatever but actually um it stretched us so much that it was impossible yeah. for us to make it work yeah well, really I, sad. I have a huge amount of guilt I, with I it. Really... huge amount of guilt with it absolutely massive especially to my parents you know vast amounts of tearing strips off myself that it's my fault that we've that we, you know, why couldn't we make it work? Why, if we had done something better, you know, tr- could we have used... Uh, the, but the the one thing that I didn't want to do is compromise on what we were because it's so local. So if we had taken the, you know, fish grading down or we had used different batter or something like that, it wouldn't have been us. And that was also a really mm. difficult conversation to have. Yeah, I appreciate your candour on, on, on that because, um, uh, but I want you to know that every a lot of people have had very very similar experiences there's there's no amount of um knowledge preparation that could have uh enabled you to anticipate that and to navigate it any better than the way you have um it's um i i i've been in the same position and believe me other people listening to this will know exactly what what you've been through so um, I, I really appreciate you being being so up, up, up front about that. These these things um, they are a perfect storm. You can't see them coming, and you and and you have to make really tough decisions um, to to protect you know what, what you've what you've already got. Um, it's you know business isn't you know the line of success isn't a straight one. There are ups and downs, and um, and how you adapt to those. I think the. The, the whole landscape for fish and chips or the climate um, has changed so much in such a short space of time, not just with raw material costs, but, but also energy and, um, and consumer, you know, consumer trends and habits. Consumers have had to adapt, you know, um, the conventional routes for them actually purchasing a meal, um, the amount of walk-ins versus, online ordering and you know, everything everything's up in the air and to steer your business through all of that um you know takes a tremendous amount of of grit and determination it's almost to the point where you're fighting um a fight not just to win an award now but to actually stay ahead of your bills and and to and, and to and, and, yeah, and, yeah and and at the moment I'm, I, you know, I'm in the same place, even with my business VAT in in my business mm. because because I show all of my turnover mm. and I pay all of my VAT. It's, it's crippling. It's really hard, and and uh, and um, you know, I have to I have to buy right um, to make, uh, and I have to sell right to make sure because we're the last ones that get paid. Yeah. You know, yeah. everybody else takes a yeah. piece, and then if there's any left, you yeah. get it. And the twenty percent for the for the VAT man, I find incredibly tough. So, you know, um, as 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 much as I really want to celebrate what you've done, I think the real celebration is that you're still sat here today, and you and, you, and you know, and, uh, yeah, and 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 you've been honest about it. You know that there's there's always sunshine after the rain. Um, I think uh, one of the things you you mentioned, James, that. Um, that I, I, I let let the comment go at the time because it wasn't appropriate. But um, one of the casualties of where you're at right now is that you're no longer a couple, um, mm. and um, and I, I, I don't really want to unpack that on a podcast. But, time. but right. you still function very, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you still yeah. function really well. Not just because you're you're raising a family um, together, but you yeah. function really well um, running two shops um, and still you know still both passionate about the, the Simpsons brand um, yeah. and, 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 and making that work. Um, mm. That can't just be for the, for the sake of the kids. You know, you, you've obviously found a way to, you know, to, to, to make that work. Um, yeah. Share a bit about that. Absolutely. It's, um, don't get me wrong. We've had tough times, you know, when we first separated, I can't remember what year it was now, 2018, something like that. Um, it, it was really hard, you know, it was like losing everything I knew, 
Um, it was my wife, my kids, my home, my family. Bonnie's parents are essentially my parents, <laughs> you know, like yeah. I, I grew up with them. Uh, I moved in with Bonnie when I was eight, 17, 18. Um, that's how I came to be in fish and chips because uh, Bonnie's mum said to me, if, if you're living here, you're working in my shop. So I said, well, okay, I'm working in your shop. <laughs> okay. And you were Pizza um, Hut before. I mean, you know, the, so, the free pizza was pretty good. You were yes, at Pizza exactly. Hut before. The free pizza was pretty uh, good. Pizza, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But, um, you know, uh, essentially it was everything that I knew about life was on its head. And that was a really hard period for both of us to get through because we had grown up together. And, and I think the fact that we had the businesses and had the children meant that we had to work on um, a, a new type of relationship with each other. And I'm really grateful that we had that because actually now, I mean, Bonnie, I, I'll always love her. She's, she's such a special <laughs> person to me. And, and I believe that she feels the same. You, you know, we've grown we have, together. We, we so have. We've been able to, uh, navigate that and um was it uh, someone said to us it, it's, it's like we're one person yeah. and because we got together so young it was like we were one person and we didn't know how to live without each other and actually separating as hard as it was has given us the opportunity to find who we are as there's growth people. that comes out of exactly that. and then now we can individually come together and do what's best for our business and our children and our lives um so we, yeah, we just had to get through it. It takes time well, and it takes a lot of work and patience and care for each other. And um, uh, we both made mistakes and said things we didn't mean and did things that we shouldn't have. But essentially, we've got through it. So, you, you know, we're both in new relationships. Bonnie's remarried. I've got a, a, a wonderful partner and we all get on and it's lovely. So we're very lucky. We're really lucky. lucky. That we're really lucky. That. If it wasn't for the businesses, we no. wouldn't have been able to. Because, you know, people separate when they have kids, but they don't talk to each other ever again, do they? Yeah. So, you know, if we didn't have the businesses, then, you know, that we well, owe... We, we owe do, we do it. owe it to it, and we, and we are I lucky. You. you. know, James is right. We've done, a, we've done a lot of work individually and together and as a family and trying to work it through, and it still doesn't... Sometimes it is still difficult, and, some, you know, it does hurt, and there are problems, but I think that James is right, that we do have to... You know, we do speak and it can be about Haddock or children. You know, it can be, <laughs> it can be what's, you know, what's going on because it, we did grow up together. And I think that's right. And I think, you know, actually, if you show me a marriage that where people haven't had arguments, especially show or show me a, a partnership of people, or, you know, brother, sister, whatever sort of, however you run a company, if those people at the top don't butt heads, don't get angry and say things, I think the difference is, is that, you can always it's easy to lash out at people you love because there's forgiveness and I think that's the difference we can Mm. it's it's I can remember when me and my mum were working together one night and we I think she I can't remember who lost the temper with who but it's the ultimate thing it's easier to shout at the person you are closest to especially in a busy chip shop it is easier to shout at that person than it is to shout at another member of staff and I think it's that thing it's that it's the Tell the customer to fuck off. We've all had a fair share of that. Um, but yeah, that's it. You know, you put the kettle on and you, you know, I'm sorry for my behaviour. I'm sorry I did that. And you know, we still have a common goal here. So let's just both shut the fuck up and get on with it. Yeah. Mm. Right. Which one of you employs my niece? Oh, that's James. Right. I mean, actually, technically, <laughs> it's the same company, Mark. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well. I want, I want to thank you. Um, she is one of my best members of staff ever. She's bloody great. I love her. I don't she's believe it. She's such a character. <laughs> Honestly, like, she's one of those people that, like, she's a lot, obviously a lot younger than me, but she's one of those people that she just chat and there's no, like, awkward, just sort of sat on her phone like I get with some staff, you know. It, it, she will just come in, she'll tell me all about her day, what she's been doing. She's wonderful. So thanks for putting her our way. Well, she loves her job, <laughs> but I, I wasn't sure if I was sending you down the river or not because um, <laughs> <laughs> um, R- R- Ruby is very, very much a free spirit. She knows her yeah. own mind. And um, yes, I'm not going to do her dirty, but um, she's great at Christmas. When, you know, when, when, when I see her at Christmas. Um, but the, the story I get about Ruby from her mum and dad is slightly more challenging than, <laughs> yeah. than um, See, honestly there's a there's a newspaper that gets given out in stride called the light and it's like 
flat earthers, anti-vaxxers, you know, it's very Stroud. Yeah. Um, and she will go and argue with them. She does not give a shit. She no. will be like, point, tell me where you think you've got this information from and why you believe Amazing. it. Amazing. She yeah. just does not. Well, she's very political and she's wise beyond her years. Yeah, she's, she can be a handful, I'm sure, but um, she's bloody great. I love her, it. her mum is the nicest person you could ever want to meet and her oh. dad is um a, a, an overachiever he's a he flies on the air ambulance no i don't way. know if you know he's an emergency surgeon on no the air way. ambulance and um, and he also is head of emergency surgery for the raf you know he's got two wow. two full-time jobs he's an, and he's a, as a brother as, as a brother-in-law he's an um, he's a, a really insp- inspirational guy um, but Ruby is not cut from their cloth. She's, <laughs> she, she's, 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 but, uh, but thank you for giving her a job. Um, oh, when no. she told me she was unhappy in her tea room job and she was being exploited, getting rubbish pay. And I said, I know somebody with a chip shop near you. And, um, so, I, well, I just wanted to, to thank you for giving her, giving her a, a, a job. Right. Um, are there some people that you want to thank, um, we're we're coming to a, um, to the end of what I wanted to get from from this uh, from this podcast, but I've, I wanted to give you an opportunity to just recognise some people that because um, I always like to give people you know my my mm. guests an opportunity just to say a few thank yous and and to give some advice to the listener thinking about entering Fish and Chip Shop of the Year. Yeah. Um, and, and, and really, I just want to tie it up with a bow at the end. And, um... Of course, yeah. I mean, the thank yous. There's so many people in the industry that have had an impact on us. You're, you being one of them, of course. Stelios. Stelios. Um, Tracy Poskett, Mike think, Pilly. You know, Tracy. Yeah. Um, and... Do you remember that? Obviously, you well, yeah, obviously. I, I would say. Do you... yeah. I mean, they're in it with yeah. us now still. Thank you for still being I in mean, it with us. I mean, my poor bloody dad. Hi, exactly. Are we, he's going to yeah. die in that shop. Every thir- my mum's had a premonition yeah. that it's going to be a Thursday. So every Thursday, the staff come in like that. Is he dead yet? Is he gone? Is he gone? Is he gone? Yeah, I you know what? I think, oh, I think, yeah. And I think the support of the NFFF and the support of people like that, especially in the beginning when I think me and James literally came... I think we literally came back off our honeymoon and we went to the NFFF in Leeds and they were all like, so what are you doing here? Like, why are you here? Like, have you got the wrong course? And we were like, no, we're on a three-day course to learn how to do this. Yeah, we turned up in uniform, yeah. didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Really professional. <laughs> we turned up in uniform. We've been frying for ages. Yeah, and we're like, oh, well, we, we might learn something. And Big John, I remember chatting to him. I can't remember what his surname was. Yeah. Um, yeah it's uh, but I mean, there's been loads of people that have helped us over the years. Um, but I'll start. Any advice for anyone thinking about entering the competition? Do you know what? It's really hard now because I don't really follow it. And I know that sounds really obnoxious. <laughs> I'm just dealing with the day to day running of the business now. And, uh, and, and I have understood that um, the NFFF have obviously taken over the award. And I don't actually know what the judging process is now. It seems to be that it's a video that you send in rather than somebody coming to your shop. Or yeah, is it... I, I think the, the, the final. The final um thing isn't done in front of a panel it's done yeah it's pre-recorded I um and uh yeah I, I think it's cost cost saving as much as anything sure. it's it i mean it's a big thing for the ntreble left to take this thing on yeah uh, of course, and, and um the judging process i think is just as robust um okay. and, okay, and 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 it's and and um i i just think um it's it's difficult for me because um uh, obviously, um, I have I have personal opinions. But I don't yeah. think necessarily anybody wants to hear them, but um, <laughs> we do. But um, I, yeah, I, do. <laughs> I, I, I personally think you should pay to enter, and I think that money okay. should that money should pay for people to actually turn up and inspect. Yeah. Um, okay, late, sure, certainly yeah. later on, certainly later yeah. on in the in the judging process. Um, but um, you know, I, I'm not going to tell the NFFF how to conduct their business. At the end of the yeah. day, I think. 
we should we should always remember that the that the competition is there to celebrate fish and chips mm-hmm. and um, yeah and and anything that we get out of the competition is a is a gr- gratefully received byproduct the the real the real purpose of the competition is is to put fish and chips at the front of everybody's minds yeah and put all the and positives everybody out there. Busier, and i th- and that's what they so, saying make everybody busier yeah and we when, should take absolutely yeah. we should take it any way we can I get think- it no, it's fine. It's one of the thank yous that I've just remembered. Nikki from Seafish. I think without having Nikki and Andy Gray mm. and actually what Seafish gave us um, and the budgets that Seafish put into it, because, um, you know, having what they did, you know, thinking about the videos that were made with Beard Askew, you know, the way that, um, that Jade edited those videos, they were massively influential to our winning. Um, yeah. You know, the, the, the money that Seafish put into it. And don't get me wrong. The NFFF have done a good job. I am not bad mouthing them. I just thank the NFFF for what they've done for our careers. Yeah. Sea fish yeah. were incredible. The support that we got from yeah. them, from the PR side of stuff, because it's so big, they were able to push us to massive places. Yeah. That made a massive difference. What's really sad is mm. I think that the world has changed since COVID. We've seen it, and although that we definitely try to push places where our business went. You know, you said earlier on that we turned the, 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 the fish and chip world on its head, and that was from coming from a different point of view. Even with that now and the learnt knowledge that we have of, of PR and things like that and where we've, where we've gone with, with, you know, with that space of our careers, the world has changed and things do not matter as much as it did. And I think trying to find a way to promote fish and chips at the time at this time is incredibly difficult so i absolutely take my hat off to anybody that wants to go through those inspections and go through it because in a time where there's war and things like that on the news and you know energy crisis v80 whatever it is whatever you see if you can find a way to promote your business and get it out somewhere where somebody might see it and there's always going to be haters but if you can get someone to come and give their hard-earned money to you for giving a product and it's a good product well done because by doing that you're representing the entire industry anyway and that's what they always said to us we don't want somebody who is just you know we want somebody to represent the industry we want somebody who stands up and says this is why fish and chips is relevant and especially now from a consumer point of view seeing what the competition does you know maybe it's quite jaded of me but even following it I don't think that they do get the same results, unfortunately. I think we were incredibly lucky to strike it when we did. So be one of the I last th- ones. That got yeah, I think, yeah, I think I think you're right. I think that's you know that what you've said there is very, very, very true. Um, mm. I think um, if you if you've got you know energy, spare energy, spare time, and spare resources, with everything that's going on, to put that into um, uh, you know, an attempt at winning fish and chips for the year. You're doing pretty Absolutely, bad, yeah. yeah. Well yeah. done, doing well done. Great. In terms of like uh, advice, yeah, I think like in terms of advice, just for um, the competition point of view, it just goes back to the beginning of not missing yeah. any tricks. You know, if you've got points to get, get the points, even if it sounds silly, and just don't be pigheaded about it. Do what it says on the form. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's worth it. It is. It is worth it. Absolutely, absolutely worth it. Absolutely, yeah. Worth absolutely it, yeah. is worth it. Yeah. There's no negative side to it. You're always going to get people to say, well, they're not my fish, yeah. fish and chips, but fuck them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, Just go for it. Just go for it. That seems like yeah. a really good point to um, to end this. Thank you both so much. Thank um, you. It's It's been a delight. I can't wait till I'm actually in your company again. Um, and I can I can actually, I feel, I feel as though I could be a bit more relaxed and more real with you. Uh, just for the things I said before we started recording. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're always um, a friend to us, Mark. Well, I, I appreciate that. I just, I'll try not to be a knob in future. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, thanks so much. Um, and, um, and see you at the next event. Yeah, we'll see you there. Cheers.